there, when you are a very young child, there isn't a, a sense of being a separate eye. There is just boundlessness. So the baby isn't looking at its hand and going, my hand. It's just in awe at everything. There is no sense of separation, a sense of a separate person in there experiencing the world. There is simply everything and everything comes from nowhere. It's not coming from past or future, it's coming from no place. It's appearing out of nothing. And the baby is just in awe. And then at about two or three or maybe later or earlier for some, there is um, a sense of I arises, a sense that I am looking at an outside world. It's not an intellectual thought, it's more, more of a feeling, but it comes with thinking. So as the brain progresses and becomes more intelligent, this I forms, and then there is this identification with an I that's always moving in time. So it's always moving from past to future, like I have been to the shops, I am going to the cinema tonight. I am a good person, I have been a good person in the past, I'll be a good person in the future, I'm being a good person now. So there is this continuous identification with a narrative that is being told to yourself. And your narrative, even though the narrative to most humans doesn't feel like this, your narrative is all about survival. It doesn't feel like that, like when you're having a narrative about what beautiful necklace you want or what dinner dance you're going to tonight, it doesn't feel like survival, but it is about survival. So the buying the necklace would be about showing your worth to other potential males or females or whoever you want to show your worth to. So, you know, if we're in a different c culture where showing your worth would be about how many tattoos or spreading mud all around your body or wearing very little clothes, then that would be what you did. Most people like to say, I'm buying the necklace though because I like it. It's my personal style or my personal taste. And that's true, but it's it is your personal taste and there is your personal flair and your personal creativity, but it's also about positioning. And to you, that is the superior look. That is the best look. That is your true and authentic self, but it's also what you consider the best thing to be. So maybe you consider that to be the highest form of being yourself is to be true and authentic. And so to you, unconsciously, that would be the most powerful position to take and superior position. So in spirituality, that is often something that's talked about a lot, authenticity. So when you're in the spiritual groups, the most superior one is the one that is most authentic. <laughs> what a game. What a game we are as humans. We're just, we're no different from the animals. So Khaleesi is always about positioning herself in the most superior way. So she wants the best bit of the bed, the best bit of the food, the best bit of all things. And I have to, part of my game with her is I have to show her that I am boss. She's second. But as humans, we have way more complex games about survival. And it's all about survival because the most powerful the most superior are in society, the safer you are. So you think. So you think. It's all about playing this game. And people get really funny about this. You know, they, they don't want to admit it to themselves because they don't want to admit their game. And because when you really see it, you realize you can't win the game because this is part of the programming and you can't undo that and another part of clever playing the game is not revealing your card so not revealing what game you're playing so if you're trying to play being superior artist you don't reveal that you just slowly do it secretly and quietly and then when people compliment you like oh, you're too kind i'm not so great oh, oh, oh. 
So to you in that moment, the most superior answer is being modest, ethical or kind. And that is the way we work, basically. And that's the way our ego is structured. Everything you're doing is about becoming the best version of you, which in your mind is the most powerful and the most successful and the most safe and the most loved. No matter what you do, always in the human world, it's about that, including myself. I am not on the human level superior to that. So what is my game right now? What is my game? Boop, 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 boop. Boop, my, name, my game is boop, beep, boop, beep, boop. I'm being cute. Boop, beep, boop, beep, boop. And everyone's like, oh, she's so cute. And I'm like, oh, get out of here. I'm not so cute. <sighs> oh, oh, oh. What is it in German? Hartner always tells me I'm being too dramatic. When I do that, I love doing it dramatic. You know? And I'll tell you this, so you have a bit of an inside view of the Lisa Cairns personality, is that when I was younger, it was safe to, for me to be adult so be adult and be looking after other people, but to do it in an innocent, childlike way. And you thought I was being unique because I was enlightened. You didn't realize that's just the game that this body is programmed to be. She is programmed to be the carer, but to do it in a non-dominating, non controlling manner. She used to do it in a playful and fun way. Da-da. Da-da. Now you know. Now you know. So all those emails I get about being authentic, I would say I am being authentic, but my authenticity is conditioned like everything in this world. Everything in this world. Do beep boop beep boop. Boop beep boop beep boop. And my mum is very childlike as well very child look we still give each other teddies and toys for presents in fact i have bought her a very cute elephant for christmas and if i could move and this wasn't a setup i would just show you some of the toys she's bought me yeah but this is very uncomfortable maybe for you to hear because what you will look for in a teacher is somebody that is superior often because then it makes you feel superior. It's not about me being superior. Actually, if you've got the opportunity, you will bring me down. But you'll want a superior teacher because the more superior teacher you have, the more superior you will feel about yourself. So I'm now just effing up my numbers of views. You're all like, oh, fuck this. Oops. Try not to swear because of the algorithms. You're all like, oh, beep to beeping this, beep to beeping this. I don't want to know any more from this beep because she's a egotistical beep that knows nothing better than any other beep. I need somebody that has the most superior, ultimate beeping message because I am beeping better than everybody else around me, but I'm pretending I'm not. And there's nothing dark in this. The darkness actually is it, in it is your inability to admit it. Like when you admit it, it's like childlikeness. Like so when you see children growing their ego, they're playing the game so badly and it can be really irritating because you can see all their manipulations. So the actual non-darkness to it is the honesty and the innocence in it, that we are simply animals. It becomes dark in the human world when we're constantly self-deceiving and deceiving the other. Like, like it's, like, and that's where it becomes dark, and that's where we get into so much conflict. 
and then it's it's like our ego will really battle for it i was watching this most amazing interview the other day about a prostitute um who is a high class prostitute it's it's uh this this guy that does amazing interviews on youtube from america and he's trying to by exposing what happens underground in America. It's kind of like a political activism. It's like showing people what happens. And one of them with a, was a, with a high class prostitute. And um, yeah, she was really cool. She's, she's obviously high intelligence and she came from a well-educated family. And yeah, and you know, she's not, a lot of the prostitutes the interviews are on drugs. She's not really on drugs. Although she smokes a lot of cannabis, but I think she doesn't see that as a drug. Um, and uh, yeah, she was just really cool about a lot of things. But um, when I was uh, watching the interview, I could see how there was a part of her ego that was hiding in proudness of her work like she was very proud of what she did she saw as like an alternative sex she saw herself as an alternative sex artist so she wouldn't call herself a prostitute and in that i could see it as a massive defense against any shame that she held against about what her work was and there's no shame in it i have no issue if somebody chooses to use their body to earn an income, I feel like they have the freaking right to do that. It's their right. It's not the government's right to choose. I think the government is absolutely crazy not legalizing prostitution personally, because what well, every day they don't legalize it, they make it m more dangerous for women, way more dangerous, sex tra trafficking, abuse. But anyway, that's why the smart countries legalize it, for the smart leaders. <laughs> I think there's very few. Holland, Germany. I don't know if that's, I think there's maybe illegal sex workers in Holland as well, and Germany. But I, I feel like it's, it's a woman's right, absolute woman's right. And nobody has the right to judge somebody for doing that, I feel, my personal view. There's me getting on my bandwagon. And the more people are educated about it, the more people can make informed choices about what they choose to do. And so I feel there's no shame in what she does, but there is shame in her because of most probably other people's judgments on her. So I can see this aggression coming into her personality that when she starts to say things um, about how proud she is, there is a look in her eyes like, if you argue with me, I am going to like get out my uh, dragon blaze and burn you. And this is, this is what the ego does or what the separate self does. It's like, if you don't believe my story about me, if you don't believe my games, which I don't really know I'm playing, but it has this sense, it's like a protection, like it will protect it at all costs. And this is where wars are created. Whereas if she could just have the information that basically there is shame that arises in her in that moment, that's so hard for people to get to because they're so ashamed. The shame that arises in her in that moment, so therefore she becomes super defensive about anybody judging her. And then she will go to war for it. You could see that she would go to war for it. And, and that's, always, that's always the way when you're defending seeking energies. We're seeking energies that create this illusion of you, which is a denial. It's a hiding. It's a denial of what we are, that we are simply animals and there's nothing shameful about being this. And we are predators and we also are um, herb herbitors, not predators. We are, um, what is it called when we're everything? Opportunitors? Opportunitors opportunistic tours um, where we'll eat anything. I forget the name of what we're called. 
you know, and and we all, we have all these complicated games, you know, and ideas and empathy, and there's nothing wrong with any of it. It's so innocent. Just like I look at Khaleesi and her games, like um, we had somebody over the other day, and she was always making sure she sat between me and the other person. And basically what she's saying to the other person is, this is my bitch. This is my bitch. You are allowed that far from her. And I allow her to do that because I'm lazy. <laughs> other dog owners wouldn't allow her to do that. Um, and there's nothing, that's just her game. That's just her dynamic there. And she doesn't have the ability to consciously recognize that the body-mind is playing a game in that moment. But we do as humans, and that's what makes us freaking amazing. And that's what makes us the ability to have what we define as enlightenment. There isn't really a person that gets enlightened, but what can happen is there can be this awakening to who you truly are, this remembering of impersonality. So the dogs just are this beingness. They never identified with the body-mind. They're just this beingness. But we have the ability to be identified, then remember this. And through that movement of being identified and then remembering themselves, in the human level, it's what we call enlightenment. There's not really an enlightenment because there's not really a human there, but that you could say that body-mind then has this recognition. But there is really no enlightenment because who would get enlightened? Like so, the true enlightenment isn't a thing. It isn't something that happens to anybody. But that is so freaking amazing that we on the human level can recognize being separate and then going back home. Whereas Khaleesi can never recognize that because she has never been a separation. There is just what's happening. And then through this self-awareness, we can go beyond our animal instincts. So we can evolve our animal sense instincts and make them freaking awesome. Like we can evolve to see empathy as beneficial to yourself, to the community, and be empathetic. Khaleesi doesn't have the ability to be empathetic. She sees a rabbit and she's like, I'm taking you down, go for the neck. She doesn't even care about playing for it and putting it out of its, its um, pain quickly. She doesn't care. She just doesn't have the ability to see that there's something that experiences this pain happening in the other body. So basically, what's happening in the human all the time is this idea of superiority and trying to be the most superior human. But there is a constant denial of that because the person is so ashamed of its nakedness. So then we go back to the story of Adam and Eve. Like, um, like Eve ate the apple of knowledge and then became embarrassed of her nakedness. So she became self-aware. She ate the apple of knowledge, became self-aware and was embarrassed of her own nakedness. So it's like we have this intelligence which allows us to see our animalist, animalness, our humanness. And then we're so ashamed of being human that we build up all these layers to try to beat everybody, but in an unconscious way. That is what every organism on this planet is about, is about expanding. It's not really about beating, but that's what you could say in one narrow view, but it's about expanding, really. And through expanding, we expand and we take over other organisms. And everything is about that. So you could say beating it, like who is competition, but then you could see it as this expansion and we as humans have the ability to expand into freaking awesomeness. Awesomeness. Like radically amazing shit. But that can only happen when there is the total recognition 
that the person isn't you. Who you are is this life, is this freedom. And then the willingness to expand that person more and more to that recognition. It's so cool. That is super cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 baby. So back to the question about superiority. Let me look at what the question is again. Is there a concept of value which is considered absolute or superior? No. You see, absolute and superior is all about you and your survival. Even in non-duality, you know, I mentioned between the absolute and the relative, the absolute and the human level, but it's, it's not about that. Anything that you think is absolute and superior is more than likely, there could also just be the thoughts about trying to organize things, but it is more than likely a seeking energy that wants to be associated with the best because you want to be the best. Or you have superior ideas over other people, so you can be the best. Just notice, you know, when you're by yourself, are you in your mind arguing with other people about these belief systems? If so, that's about survival. Do you get mad when other people don't believe you? Yeah, baby, yeah. Who you are is this emptiness which is experiencing. There is no superior or better belief system. There is an evolution which will constantly expand. Who you are is this moment, which is free, which is all knowing while simultaneously not knowing. And there is nobody that has more of it. Nobody. There can be people that are or body minds that are identified with being a person and forgetting it, but essentially everybody has the same beingness. It's the birthright of all things. It is everything, including the inferior thoughts and the superior thoughts. It is all. It is you. It is me. It is a dog. It is the sound of the radiators now whistling. And is the sunlight, is the dark, is the air, is the computer, it is everything and no thing. And this is your freedom. This is the freedom. No concept will free you, no therapy will free you, no action will free you. It will help the person, it will help expand the person. But the true freedom comes from recognizing the freedom of what you are right now, what's always been, what always will be. This, 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 this. Okay, so we can move on to questions. 